Come on in, man. You know what time it is. Come on in this house. Lord, I will lift my eyes to the hills, knowing all of my is coming from you. Your peace you give me in times of the storm. Yes, you are. You are strength, source of my strength, and you are the strength of my life, and I give you total, total praise to you. All right. What's up, y'all? In the name of Jesus. One more time. Hey, Jennifer, how you doing, sis? Glad you could join us today. Just wanted to quit off, start off with a little bit of instrumental, instrumental praise to you. You know, I love the Lord. He heard my cry. How, how many of y'all can say that? You love the Lord. He heard, he yet hearing your cry. You know, that was my God daddy's favorite song when we start Sunday school. He used to sing that song. We start sometimes be just me and him together, starting off church together. He used to sing that song. Not that right there, but the one uh, uh Love lifted me. Love lifted me. I said away nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Oh, oh love lifted me. Love lifted me, oh no, when nothing else could help, love lifted, lifted me, my God. Say, turn to the book of Exodus chapter 14. You know, me and my wife went over this earlier today. We was going through this scripture today, and I was already going to speak on it. And uh, it just really hit my head. You know, look at this big old head right here. It busted me right upside the head when she started reading. Somebody I can read by myself, but when we get together and kind of join in, see my more revelation just start pouring out and pouring out. So go there, because we're going to get ready to start this thing. i got a couple of announcements to make. One, first of all, if it's your first time tuning in, this is Dying Kingdom Come Ministries. And I am a ministry with me and my wife, Phoebe Stell, and I am Prophet James Stell in the house. Yes, sir. Uh, and I am here to bring you a word from the Lord. Sometimes he can come in and just do what he wants to, and we, he can come in and interrupt because this is his program. This is his world, and I am his, and he is Lord. So he can come in and jump in anytime he wants to. Jump in the middle of the program, Lord, please, because it ain't mine anyhow. You know what I'm saying? I don't need that kind of pride, boy. But look here. It's an announcement I got right here. And also, i like to say, this Don Kingdom Come Ministries, where we, our motto, our scripture is, be, behold, the kingdom of God is where? Within you. The kingdom of God is within you, not on the outside. It's coming out by observation, but lo, the kingdom of God is within you. That's where all your power lies and where all your power resides is in you. Man, we got so much power in us being Christians. It's just waiting for us to come out. But we're going to get into this scripture. But I got a couple of announcements right here. It said, there will be no live next week because I'm going to be out of town. Okay? So there's not going to be a live next week. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. I, I know I don't got a schedule, but who, who, who's to say the Lord say, boy, I get on there and do a lot, you know? So I'm open to change. But the Bible say be instant in season and out of season. Uh, so then it said, the next one is, Thy Kingdom Come Ministries also is on YouTube and Facebook. As a Facebook page, some people will get on there and I invite them and I'll send invites to them. 
and uh, you can get on the Facebook one. But all the sermons, I got over a hundred and something sermons. If y'all just tuning in on YouTube, and uh, if my wife is in the background listening, I wonder if she can type put that uh YouTube channel link up on there, and it's a it's a smorgasbord of sermons that's been on there the past ten years, probably at least ten years. And if you can get on there. Check them out. There's a whole lot of them on there. Okay. Uh, but it's on YouTube. It's called Thy Kingdom Come Ministries. And uh, you, you'll see me because it, it'd be a, not Thy Kingdom Come Ministries, but Thine, T H I N E. Because a lot of people that get on there and then they get somebody else because they get someone, but what's the name of mine is T H I N E. And so you'll see my face on there. Now, also, number three, if you, I just, just to ask it out there, if you would feel like or feel led, to impart into this ministry any kind of way financially. Uh, put on there. I got a link on there. There she goes. See, I told you, boy. My wife is like on, on point, boy. I'm trying to told you. Now, I said, <laughs> you can email us. and My wife can get the information to you if you want to. Uh, if the Lord put on your heart to uh, financially put in this ministry. At, the email address is tkcm828 at outlook.com. TKCM828 uh, at Outlook.com and then she'll get you the um the proper whatever it is, it is right there. If you feel led to it, and then we'll respond to you and, and and do it as the Lord see fit. Understand what I'm saying? So, you know, a lot of people like to put in this about tithing and doing this here and that there, and they put up nice little sermons about tithing and putting money in there. I'm not saying it's not it's for you not to tithe, but what I'm saying is in the New Testament, it says, as the Lord has purpose in your heart. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? As the Lord has purpose in your heart. Because if you want to go back in there, when God did, a lot of people like to use that same that scripture where it said what a woman had had to uh, paraphrase about she had only one meal and one thing to eat uh, about Elijah, but she went ahead and fed the prophet and he, he, he made a vast overflow. Well, the thing is, what he told her after she got that blessing, she didn't, he didn't tell her to go give it to the church. He didn't tell her to go do all this. He didn't tell her to go buy a new car. What he told her to do word for word is pay your debts. You don't hear too many ministries say that. Pay your debts. You hear, the, you hear the bank say it all the time, but I'm telling you the word said, pay your debts. And then if you give, give as the Lord purpose on your heart. My God. And that's the end of that. Ain't no use in getting in there trying to Sweet talk and do all that there. I don't understand ministries that do that all the time. You know, you just put it out there, ask them, and the Lord will put it on their heart if he, if they, if he want them to. So check it out. Go to Exodus chapter 14, verses 5 through 10, uh, 14, and we're going to start right there. Now, what we starting at is, this is what the, the, the title of this sermon is, To the Cross. First, we, we, what we're going over right now is a two-part series. So the next time we come in, it'll be the second time. The first one we're talking about is when the Moses uh, led the children of Israel to cross over the Red Sea. So it says right here, first we'll pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray and plead the blood over everybody listening right now. Everybody that's willing to share this button. Everybody that's willing to share this sermon with somebody that need to hear this inspiration and hope, God, for such a time as this. God, we clear the cobwebs right now. We move all flesh out of the way. We move all anything out of the way that's not of you, dear Father. Let your voice be heard. Let me hide behind the cross, God, the one and only cross, which is able to save any man's soul, whoever believes on it. So, God, I'm praying this message be an extension of the cross, God, that they be able to be saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Spirit, dear Father, to be able to endure these times right now that we are in, God, that they keep their eyes focused on you, God, in the name of of Jesus. Bind up all distractions in Jesus' name. Have your way in this place, God. We thank you, God. Even we pray, we even pray for our enemies. We know we pray for enemies that hate us, that despitefully use us, that talk bad about us. We lift them up to you right now, God, because if we go in our hands, we're going to mess everything up. And in your hands, everything will work out to Romans 8.28. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hey, Lana, what's going on? Alright, so now, Let's start right here. I want to start verse 5. It says, and it was told, if everybody don't know where we are, we're in Exodus, the book of Exodus, chapter 14, verse 5. 
I believe this is a word from on high to bless somebody right now and encourage them. It says, and it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled. Now, this was after Pharaoh let the people go. Pharaoh went ahead and let uh, the Israelite, the children of Israel go. And he didn't leave empty-handed neither. He gave them, or they gave them a whole lot of jewelry, a whole lot of gold, a whole lot of substance. See, and that's the thing. See, also, you might, God has been calling a lot of people to come up out of Egypt for a good minute. Egyptian, remember, in the Old Testament, Egypt was a place. It still is a place, but applying it to the New Testament right now, Egypt is your mindset. Your mindset, and we're going to get off into that right there. I have to ask God to help me with Egyptian mindset. I was born with an Egyptian mindset, y'all, because an Egyptian mindset, not saying discount and saying Egypt is bad, okay? That the, the, the natural Egypt, but the Egyptian mindset was against the, the God of Israel, the only one true God of Israel. And so it had different mindsets, understand? Mindset set in by the way we was raised. Mindset set in by the way we was taught through all those experiences that we went through. And we need to ask God to change a lot of our mindsets. Hold on. Now we're going to get it right here. It said, and he fled in the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people. And they said, why have we done this that we have let Israel go from serving us? Ooh, ooh. They let them go. Now Pharaoh want to bring them back into, see, you're Pharaoh. What you done got called out of is always not going to just let you go. It is God that lets you go. It is God that opened your eyes and opened your heart and let you know that you was in a bad situation and things could be better. But the thing is, is that when it lets you go, when you done accepted salvation and you done got let go, you going to always, going to always want to come and call you back. That's why Paul talked about beating his flesh down daily. He said, I beat my flesh in the submission because this flesh, this mindset always want me to go back to destruction. It's going to always want me to go back. If I was a hoe out there, if I was a drug addict, if I was whatever, it's going to always want me to go back because that was my only life and living that I knew. My God. But somebody say, but God, but God, once he called you out of something, you just got to remember that you called out. That's what the word called means. We are called out ones. That's the church, the ecclesia. We are the called out ones. We are called out from the world. We are all called out from the system of the way the world works. Understand? And we have to keep, that's why I read this Bible and put me in remembrance when I want to go back, that I can't go back because I've been called out by God. My God. And that's why I don't have, even though when the desires come, I got to remind myself, I've been called out. That was up with the children of Israel. They have been called out. So it says right here in verse 6, And he made ready his chariot and took his people with him. He took about 600 chosen chariots. The word chariots and horsemen and stuff means strength. So the devil, God grabbed all his strength to come out to Moses through Pharaoh. Now, check this out. In verse 8, he said, And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with a high hand. That means they went out hitting them hooves. Boy, they was knocking them. They was hitting out of that horse with them spurs. And they were saying, we going, they were going top speed. Them horses was thirsty. But he said they were trying to get them. He said, but the Egyptians pursued after them all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army and overtook them encamping by the sea uh, beside Behara and behind Belzephon. But check this out. This is what I want to skip to. Verse 10, it said, and when Pharaoh drew nigh, the, when, when Pharaoh drew nigh, when your enemy draw nigh, when the, and I'm not really talking about the enemy out there. I'm talking about the enemy that's in a you. Yourself, you are always going to be your worst enemy. When your enemy inside you that's drawing now. Verse 10 said, And the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were so afraid. 
And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. I love in the word where every time when the children, even though they done crazy stuff, they rebelled. God, their relationship with God was so on point with God, not them. God remained faithful to you when you faithless to him. He said, when that happened right there, they cried out to God and he heard them. Anytime you cry out to God, he hears you. Now, just because he don't answer you right on time that you want to, don't mean that he ain't heard you. See, some, that's the thing is, we got to understand, God's timing is Kairos timing. We, the, what the word Kairos means God's perfect timing. But we on earth are living in Kronos time. Kronos time is the time that we live in, the seasons and the days that we live in. We in the Kronos time of God. So the thing is, this Bible, this map quest, this ways or whatever this is, this keeps us in contact with not allowing our Kronos to move away from our Kairos. Oh my God, that's good right there. See, you got a Kairos time if you God of a purpose, a will, and a design to do that only God called you to do, but you got your Kronos time, your natural time that you live in that's always going to pull you away from your God-given purpose. Don't let your Kronos time pull you from your Kairos time. So that means I got to check my mindset. But people are hanging around. I can't. Now the children of Israel were so afraid right here. And it says in verse 11. And they said unto Moses. Now listen to this here. Listen to this here. Because we are a lot of folks do this. And I'll be the one that done that out of ignorance. It says in verse 11. And they said unto Moses. Because they were no graves in Egypt. This is got them complaining. Uh, ain't no graves in Egypt, huh? So now you done took us away to die in the wilderness. Wherefore hast thou dealt with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee? Egypt said, let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. Look here. God then called them out of something, provided them a way. They wasn't starving. Their feet wasn't getting hair, wasn't swelled up. Might well say they wore the same Air Jordans for 40 years. <laughs> There was no hole in the soul. And they want to go back and worship. Go back verbally and worship something that's been destroying them. Why would they do that? Because you know why? Because they like comfort. See, sin is comfortable. With sin, I don't have to repent. Sometimes this, this dude can abuse me, but guess what? At least he paying attention to me. She might be taking all my money, but guess what? She giving me some attention so we, we, we accommodate. We reason for this stuff to try to make us feel like we comfortable when really we ain't comfortable because when you got God in you, God is always going to show you that you can do better because better is inside of you. You got a covenant of better promises that you can be better. And that's going to take being uncomfortable. Mm. We live in a society that wants us to be comfortable. Have flat screen TVs, remotes that talk to your back. Alexa, turn off the TV. Alexa, turn off the light so we can be comfortable. Almost got cars that could drive off if they wanted to by themselves. So we can brag to the next man. About, I got the latest thing, and I'm comfortable. Comfortable is not the way. The more you in this Christian thing, and in this Christian walk, a real Christian, I ain't talking about no professed one, it's going to get more uncomfortable. But it's going to look comfortable on the outside to other people. Because why? It's going to look uncomfortable to them because you are light shining in a darkness. And as that flesh is being crucified every day, your light is piercing darkness wherever you work, wherever you go. The soles of your feet are holy ground and it has a subject. The atmosphere has to subject to the God that's in you. Because the Bible, I said it last week, that he will make even make his enemies to be at peace with you. The battle is not yours, it is the Lord. That's what he's trying to tell them right now. But look, we right now, I'm finna get in here and read again. They want to go back. 
Come on, let's not be perfect. And how many of y'all really want to go want to go back to something? Be honest, it got real tough. That that Cavas, that that that, that, that Cavassier was good. That Hennessy was real tight. Rolling up that weed with no stems in it. It was easy to roll that stuff up and get you a blunt and let it take your cares away. <laughs> It was easy to go to the bar on the weekends and spend your check up to feel comfortable. Thinking you unwinding stuff off of you. But no, it was always good. But God, but you remember God called you out. Oh my God. So it says, let me give you a definition. Wilderness, the wilderness is where God works in a person's life the most. If you feel like you're in the wilderness right now, God is working on you right now. This is where he works you and he this the nighttime in your life, the wildernesses. In fact, the Bible says he brought them out to the wilderness so he can suck with them, mean having conversation with them and eat with them. Do not throw away your wilderness experience and act like it ain't that, that, that God ain't listening, that you're in an isolated state and that you, you can contemplate suicide. And, and, and it's just a test. Your wilderness experiences is right now is getting you ready for your palace experience. My God. It says Moses could take them through the wilderness because God had anointed him, one. And number two, he had already survived being driven out into the wilderness. So what better person to lead them out of a wilderness than somebody that's been through a wilderness experience like Moses? There are some of y'all that's listening right now will be great leading people up out of the wilderness right now because you've been through wildernesses experiences, you've been on them streets, you slang that dope, you be, you've been on, on the street doing all kind of stuff, you was a good thief, you was a kleptomaniac, you know how to steal good, you know how to survive wilderness experiences. Can't nobody tell it like you told it. My God, I know I'm helping somebody out right now because right now I feel like God is showing me that you are in a wilderness experience right now. There ain't nobody listening. You isolated. The voices in your head is telling you to throw in the towel. You, the, the voice is loud, telling you the negativity and self-destruct. That means you closer and closer to wait to the prize of the high calling of Christ Jesus. Don't you throw in that towel yet. Don't you drive off that cliff. Don't you, don't you overdose. There's a Holy Ghost waiting on you to fill you with his love. This love that you get from God is not going to be from the world type of love. Understand? The word that God, that gave God give you in his presence. The Bible says that in the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy. That is the only thing you listening to. I'm in the same world with you. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm in the same world with you. Only thing is, is that I'm depending on the joy of the Lord. That's it. I'm depending wholeheartedly on the joy of the Lord, which is my strength. Not no strength of my own. I don't have it. I run out. I'm going to run out because why? I'm human and I'm living in sin. But I have a God that I can tap into. That will never fail. And the Bible it says that if I wait upon the Lord, he's going to renew my strength. And I'll man up his wings like eagles. I'll run and not be weary. And I, and, I, and I will never faint. Sometimes it surprised me that I'm still living. It surprised me that I have my right frame of mind. But, I, but you know why? Because I'm asking God to help me crucify this flesh. There's some pleasures that I would like to do in my flesh that I cannot do because I'm I'm a I got a, I'm, I'm blood bought. Jesus purchased me through His blood. Now check it out. Let me go a little further. It said Moses said in verse verse thirteen, and Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For, and I want y'all to really listen to this right here. Because I'm going to share something with you. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, 
ye shall see them no more forever. That's just how guaranteed salvation is with God. Before I moved up here, me and my wife moved up here to Dallas. I went to her one night and I said, baby, the Lord, I was reading the Bible, the Lord gave me this word right here. And this is our peg to stand on when we left San Angelo to move to relocate up here in Dallas. It was this scripture right here. And it said, and I read it again. He said, that for ye, for fear ye not stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today. And boy, I saw a whole lot of Egyptian stuff in my personal life. I saw a lot of backbiting. I saw a lot of broke days. I saw a lot of not having no money. I saw a lot. When I left, look here, when I left San Angelo, I was on hood with raising my daughter. I'm talking about those were enemies of poverty. And I had a mindset that was like, man, I need to go back out in them streets and try to make that money again. Them enemies was pressing just like the enemies was pressing behind them. The children of Israel, they were pressing me. But God gave me this promise that you will see them no more. But I had, and me and my wife had to step out on faith. Never relocated up here going this far like this at one point. And going to relocate further also. But now... But I remember this scripture, and this is a promise to you too. You're going to have to walk this out by faith, y'all. This is not mama, not big mama, not sister, not trying to people please brothers and sisters. This is your personal destiny, and you're going to step out by faith because you got a horde of enemies that's coming up behind you, that's trying to pull you back, and they know how to talk to you on your private time when ain't nobody looking, when ain't nobody listening, when your house by yourself, them voices get real loud. And it's really even trying to press real hard because now there ain't really no fellowship and going to church no more where you can at least shake a brother's hand and yada yada and hug and all this here. God is saying all them days over with. He is trying to build disciples. God never said in here about building church members. Come on now. Come on. He said in the Great Commission, he said go and make disciples. Disciples is people just like him. Then that's what I want to make is disciples, somebody that can stand a storm, not no cream puff cupcake brother and sister that's always running and scared. I'm talking about those that know how to stand on their own and their own two feet and be able to weather the storm and let them know that they're more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. This is a time right now. It's not a bad time. It might seem like it's wilderness right now with all the ERCOT mess going on, with all the COVID and stuff right now. But you that are survivors, this is a great time in your life because this is the only way God can truly disciple people. It's through persecution and through the wilderness. Know not that your labor is not in vain right now that you're going through. Even when you got to hold your tongue, and I'm talking to somebody right now that got some truth that can expose somebody and tear down and defame their character, and it's all true, but God is telling you, hold your peace. Hold your tongue. Even the times when you're holding your tongue and not saying nothing that you could destroy somebody, God is honoring that. You are learning how to master the wilderness. My God. Verse 14 says, the Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Oof. So it says right here. Now I like this here. It says, so Mo Moses was familiar with the wilderness. You need to surround yourself with people who have been through wildernesses. I said been through, not still in there. And willing to share their wilderness experiences. And he said right here. Verse 16. But lift thou up thy rod. And stretch out thy hand over the sea. And divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground. Through the midst of the sea. And I'll be. I'll behold. I will harden the heart 
of the Egyptians and they shall follow them and I will get me, I'll get my honor, he said, upon all his hosts, upon his chariots and upon his horsemen. Do you understand what he is saying right now? He's saying now you got to lift up. He's giving you instructions, Moses. Lift up, go out, lift up your rod and stretch it over right now. Act like you're just stretching your hand over all them problems right now. Over all the situations, even the situations that you don't know about. Somebody in here I'm talking to battling with sexuality right now. They don't know which way to go. They battling with trying to do right, battling financially. Stretch your hand out there. That's your rod right there. The word rod means this. A branch, an extension, figuratively a tribe, also a rod, whether for chastening or a uh, figuratively connection, ruling, a scepter, throwing a at least out walking, a staff, a figure of support of life. God is your support. God is your life. The, he, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and no man coming to the Father but by me. You have that rod inside of you. That rod means authority. That rod means a chastising. Maybe you in trouble, maybe you done got yourself in trouble, and God is chastising you right now. But the Bible says that he chastises those that he loves. He said, if there is no chastising, he said that you are bastards. That's what the words say, and God is not raising no bastards this season. That means he going to whoop you. He going to correct you out of love. I don't care what it all these people coming out of here talking about. Well, I don't want to spank and I don't want to. But when you get your tail whooped, you think you're dying. When all you're doing is getting whooped back into the. That's what's cricket is being made straight. He just whooping you to get you back into where you need to go. Because the Bible says it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness in the end. Anything God is allowing to happen to you is Romans 8, 28, my favorite scripture. It's going to work together for your good. That's why I don't care what I got to go through because I see more of the goodness of the Lord than I can even repent of stuff or how good he's been to me. Yes, sir. He's been so good. He got a, I got a track record of the goodness that he's been in my life. Way better than the bad. Man, I'm on it this morning. Boy, I feel the Holy Spirit seriously. And the reason the Holy Spirit is pressing this urgency in you is because I believe there are some people, it is time for you to cross your Red Sea. Verse 19 says, And the angel of the Lord which went before the camp of Israel removed and went behind them, letting you know, I got your back. I got your back. I know everybody else done told you to the curb. I know that you done got all these baby daddies and all this stuff and baby mamas and everybody wanted and, and talking bad about you. But you know what, sister, brother, I got your back. Nobody going to have your back like the way I got your back. You know, and I want to explain something right here, too, because I, I keep hearing this so much a lot. People always say, and it's a scary thing to say, but a lot of people say, only God can judge me. Now that is true to the extent, but and but check this out: if you don't know God, you do not want God to judge you. <laughs> Cause let me tell you something: it ain't gonna be like you going to court here in this world, and you waiting on your attorney, your district attorney, and pre-trial sentences, and allow you to get a lawyer, and this here, yada yada, and standing up. Ain't going to be but one time because the witness is going to be your actions that you've done in this body and it's already being recorded. Oh, I saw a young man giving a testimony that said he went to hell and he said he was in the back and had at the judgment seat. He didn't go to hell. He was at the judgment seat. And he said it was thousands of people in front of him and it, they would hit the judgment seat of God and they would disappear just like that. That's just how fast they was judged. Bam, bam, bam. They didn't even have enough time to explain. As soon as they got there, he said by the two, by he got there and he, he saw thousands go off this cliff hollering. That's the kind of judgment we going to because we already judge when we come out this body. Hebrews 9, 27 say, it is appointed for man to die once and after that the judgment. Ain't going to be no pre-trial citizen. Ain't going to be no fam family members coming over there to see how what these citizens and, and all witnesses understand. You already judge soon. You're at last breath come out of your body. 
So you want God to judge you? Are you ready for him to judge you? Because that's just how quick it's going to be. It ain't going to be nothing like we're looking at right now. So are you really ready for God to judge you? No, I think not. I'm saved. I'm sanctified and I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. And I still have a fear. Just because of being in reverence of God himself. You ain't got no fear of God. I don't, get you. I don't know. <laughs> you better make sure you got something in you. You better make sure you know you saved before you hit that courtroom right there. Now check it out. Just wanted to share that with you. We're almost done. So verse 19. Let's go to verse 19. No, not verse 19. But it says right here. And this is the part I really want you to listen to right quick before we go. He said, when Moses, verse 21, and Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong wind and the east wind by the night and made the sea dry, dry land and the waters were divided and the children of Israel went out on the midst upon the sea ground. I mean, they walked through it. God made the whole sea go up and he made a way for them to go. Do you understand that whatever sea that might be in your way, God can roll all of that stuff up and make it dry land and you get across just because he loves you. Woo, that's deep. He said now, then he said the Egyptians and the Egyptians was coming out after them. God made the way. The enemy coming behind them. And he said in the midst of the sea, then all Pharaoh's horses and his chariots and the horsemen. And it came to pass that, uh, 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 uh. Now go to verse 25 says, and he took off their chariot's wheels that they drave them heavily so that the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel for the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. Now check this out. Now the enemies is running up on them. Their wheels start falling off and then they scared now. Let us leave these folks alone because they God is protecting them. Check this out. But if you read down further, it says that verse 28, go to verse 28. And the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remained not so much as of one of them. <laughs> so what I want to tell you out of that, what I just got revelation I got out of that is that if God is telling you to do something and you got it in your spirit, okay, I'm not, I know I'm not supposed to be doing this. I know I'm not supposed to be floating with the enemy. Do what he say. Cause look, they wanted to repent. They listened to Pharaoh who Pharaoh's heart was hard, went out into the sea in the middle of it, then they said, let's leave from them. But it was too late. So who are you following? Because it was too late for them to go back. They came to their senses at a too late time. Don't be listening to, and let's go to show. Don't go be listening to people that whose heart is seriously hard. Don't be hanging around women that don't like men and telling you don't try to find no men and ain't no good Negroes out there and ain't no good women out there. Don't be falling behind all that bitterness and that hard heart because it can lead you into a trap. Ain't no good jobs out there. Ain't nothing out there. They tell you all kind of negative stuff because they fail, but they are not you. It is your turn, and it's your seat. This is one seat. It's just one body of one. It's two to cross, I said. This is the first one. And the second one, part two of this series, is crossing Jordan into your promised land. They had to cross the Red Sea first in order to cross Jordan to get to the promised land. And that's going to be the next sermon. So I want to pose this question to somebody listening right now. And don't forget to share this on your, uh, uh, share this sermon, these sermons on your uh, page. Because somebody, I guarantee you need to hear them. If you're getting something out of this, share it with somebody else. Check it out. You might be right now at your Red Sea. 
you scared to go forward. All kind of stuff happened. I'm old. I'm too old now to do this, that, that. But you still got an inkling and desire to want to go forward. You even trying to fight to do the right thing. Why am I doing right? Ain't nobody looking. Ain't nobody paying no attention. But then you know that you have to press on. It's either you're in the middle of a choice right now. Either I need to press on into the unknown or I'm going to let my known, them, them horses and them chariots of Egypt and Pharaoh, they come in a swallow and take me back up into slavery. A slave to unrighteousness. A slave to things that I know that I that I did before and I didn't get a good result. So why do I want to go back there? So back there is canceled. I'd rather float into the own unknown, but I'm kind of terrified and scared. Just like these children of Israel. They terrified and they were scared. But the thing is, God had showed them to stand still. That was the instruction. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Don't move back and forth if you don't know where you're going. Just get the tenacity to stand still and watch God. I said, watch him show up. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He will show up. He showed up in my life plenty of times, and he's still showing up in my life plenty of times. And all them enemies of poverty and, and, and backbiting and people not liking and all of that stuff, that was, I ain't seen him since we moved. Because I stood still on these promises in this book. Yo, let me tell you something about this book right here. This book here, I don't know if you ever heard of Map Quest or Waze or Google Maps. That's all this is for your salvation and your soul. When you get in that car and you click in that destination, your destination instead of going to 33rd Street, your destination here could be, it's going to heaven. Now, when you click in on Waze, check out what's going to happen. You lot are going to pop up. I know up here in Dallas. You're going to pop up that thing and it's going to say accident over there. It might say construction over here. And it might, it don't reroute you and get you there to get you around that. And that's all this thing here does is reroute you. It's not going to take the mistakes. It can't take the accidents away. It can't take the construction and the delays away. The de But it will detour you to keep you on track to your destination. It's warnings in here to tell you, don't go that way. It's going to take too long. But you got to listen to, the, to, to what the thing is saying. Now you're going to sit out there in traffic 30, 40 minutes all you want to. And you run out of gas looking crazy. <laughs> Look crazy, but this right here is going to tell you the delays, the, the construction, the stuff that lead to our destruction. This is going to tell you and help you out along the way. Ooh, that's a good one, huh? So wake up in the morning and put on your put on your map quest right here. Put your map quest on and say, God, show me if there's any delay. Show me if there's any uh, 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 construction uh, uh, stuff along. Show me if any wrecks is along the way. So I ain't got to go down that path because I already know what's going to happen if I do. Show me and not only show me, God, give me the strength to be obedient and listen. Because I'm tired of making these same mistakes over and over and over again. And having to look myself in the mirror and say, Dang, you did it again? Mm. God chastises those that he loves. I'm just giving it to you the way I got it. I need the gospel to be good and hard to me. I don't want no fluff. I need a real, I need a real gospel. I don't need a, a clap a, 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 and spin three times around. I don't need that. I know how to do all that. I used to dance in the clubs all the dang time. I need a real God. And he is real, but you need to be around real godly people that know how to give you a real God. So, if you are stuck like that, stand still. The salvation is accepting Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you don't know him, repeat after me. Say, Father God, 
in the name of Jesus, I pray and I ask you into my heart as my Lord and my Savior. God, I know, I don't know, I know I'm going down the wrong direction. Or really, I don't know where I'm going, but I know that the prophet has spoken and there is some direction that I can go down that can, that can lead me to liberty in the name of Jesus. So, God, I'm praying and I'm pleading with you and I ask you, God, into my heart to be my Lord and my personal Savior. Say, Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. And thank you for filling me with your Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name I pray. If you've done that, write in the comments, put in there, and tell me that you've done that. Because you've done that, if you confess that right there, and you believe in your heart, you are in heaven. Now, we still need to get this work on sanctification. Sanctification is knowing how to pull the old ways off, and that's not an overnight thing. I'm saved, but yet I still got, I'm still cussing. I'm still cussing folk out. I'm saved, but I still got ways that I still, I still hate me and I still hate what my daddy did to me. I hate what my mama, I hate the rejection and I need time. That's what sanctification is after you get saved is God peeling all of that off to get you to move away all of that stuff so that you can mature in the name of Jesus. So I'm about done, man. I'm out. Sometimes I don't be want to be on here this long. But if God say stay here, I got to. So I this is Prophet James Steele here at Don Kingdom Come Ministries. Love each and every one of y'all. Remember, hit that share button. Thank you, Jennifer. God bless you, sister. Girl, you got a lot. God got a lot for you, girl. I'm trying to tell you. He got a lot waiting on you. I, I, I sensed it when I left Angelo. I know. Because you've been through a lot, man. And you got a lot. Oh, you got a serious testimony. Seriously, you do. You do. There's a lot of young women out there that need some of your guidance. Jennifer, get on out there and tell them. Let them know. If your heart feel it. If your heart feel it to feel impression, uh, impressed upon that. Do you see any of them young females out there? Man, let them know. Just say hi to them. That hi might be something to pull they would be like, wait, wait, ain't nobody even told me how before. Just that could be a, a, a testimony in itself. God bless each and every one of y'all. God bless you, Lana. And y'all be blessed. And I see y'all. Remember, not next week, but the week after. Nine Kingdom Come, signing off. God bless.